I hope I remember how to work all this stuff. Hey, Steve, with entering into space. Yeah, entering into space. Not entering into the backyard to look at clouds, but space. I've been working on it for a while. I really have, I promise you. So I got a new scope for the backyard. Uh, wanted to go wide field, and so that's what I did. And also wanted to check off a little bucket list item for getting a William Optics Z61. A William Optics anything, really, like a pencil holder anything William Optics. I just, uh, I've always admired their craftsmanship and the quality of the images that I see coming out of those scopes. So, voila, wait, voila. So far, this little scope has been pretty cool. Uh, I've never owned a doublet, and I thought, well, doublets really only affect, uh, I think, one-shot color cameras. Why? Because you're shooting the red, blue, and the green all at one time, and so with a triplet, it's able to focus all three color spectrums. A doublet's not able to, so you might have some kind of funky uh, larger stars or not quite focused stars. Uh, but with monochrome, um, I, I really don't think that's a challenge at all, especially shooting narrowband. And so far I've done like all of one target this summer. This summer? I said summer. Uh, yeah, and I'm working on a second one, which would be the Elephant Trunk Nebula. Hopefully I'll have something to show you. I might be able to shoot some, shoot some uh, subs tonight. Um, it's been rough, man. It's been so rough, I've taken up fishing. Yeah, and kayaking. Guess what? There's Facebook groups for that, and there's a whole lot of money you can spend on that, just like in astrophotography. Okay, and never mind, let's get back to the scope. So, the scope has done really well so far. Uh, I've been super impressed with it. So, let's go over some of the, uh, the specs of the scope. Like most scopes, come standard with uh, the FPL 53 glass. Uh, guess what? Awesome. This one did come with like a little badge that said inspected by inspector, I don't know, 27. Uh, which is pretty cool because you feel like your scope got some personal touch to it. Uh, so thank you, William Optics. The native focal length on this scope is 360 millimeters. I did go for the the designed, what is it I'm trying to say? Designed and match, they go together, hand in hand, uh, I don't know, focal reducer flattener. I wanted to get a little bit wider focal length on it. So I did go with the Z61 flattener, which I have something to tell you about that that I discovered that you really need to know. Stay tuned to later on in the video. But anyway, yes, uh, native focal length of 360 millimeters. 
uh, with the 0.8 times reducer that reduces down to 288 millimeters. So pretty wide. Uh, has an aperture, obviously, Z61, 61 millimeters. You know, I've got guide scopes that big. But yeah, don't let that scare you away. Also, the native focal ratio, the speed, boom, boom, is 5.9, so F6. Uh, but reduced down, we're F4.7, so turbocharged. Uh, and like I can tell the difference, man, I can't. I can tell the difference between F8 and F4. Yeah, I can tell that difference. But definitely a cool, cool little scope. So let's go over here to the scope and I'm gonna show you, a, I'll show you around it, a couple little things, a couple little quirky things that you may need to know about um, if you get those, that combination of the reducer and the telescope. All right, so super quick here, let's take off the, uh, the dew strap. And this is the focal reducer flattener. And this is a collar ring here that adjusts, kind of micro adjusts your back focus. So basically from this point here uh, to the actual camera, you need 56 millimeters of back focus because your glass is right about in here. And so I was able to get it really close using the 16 millimeter, 11 millimeter ring plus like 21 millimeters of the filter wheel. Uh, but guess what? I had two challenges with this thing. Let's look right here at the focuser. So what happens is when you get this flattener focal reducer, it gets a rotation, a rotator collar. And it's pretty cool. It's got, it's got tons of dials and stuff on it that lets you know how to set the rotation. If you want to rotate your camera and keep it set to the same point every time, that's pretty awesome. But with that on, it pushes everything back which makes the focus point further up into the folk, the OTA, which meant, get out of here, cords, uh, which meant that, you see where this little 10 mark is here, this locking collar ring was actually removed. The flattener or the rotator screws on to the ends of the OTA draw tube here. This wasn't here. This comes off as the first thing. But what happens is, is because of that added length, because it pushed it back that far, my focus point was way up here. It was almost here. So I could actually not autofocus. It couldn't travel on either side of focus. So I had to almost manually focus using the, um, the batten off mask that's built in, unscrew, you know the deal. So I ended up having to ditch the rotator and take that completely off. I had to put this compression locking collar back on the scope, thread everything back on, and now you can see that this is basically my focus point for hydrogen, and the focus point changes in it are very minimal. All right, so as you can see, this is the rotator that I was referring to, and it basically, this part right here threads onto the OTA. This gets removed, and then you can tell how much further back, if I lined it up like right there, see if I can look over it, something like that. You can see how much more it kicks it back. Uh, can you, maybe, I hope so. Uh, so anyway, yeah, what that did is it threw it back, which means everything's gotta go forward, and then I did not have enough focus travel. So let me know in the comments if you've had that same challenge. If I'm just an idiot, it could be, or if you really had that challenge, because to me, if William Optic is going to sell these two as like a mate, like they go together, like they were born to be together, they didn't play well together. Uh, but other than that, once I took that off, I was able to get focus. Everything else is really good. I made some minimal adjustments. I still have some tiny little freaky little dee -dee -dee stars out in the very far corner. But guess what? You're so far away, you can't really see it. Uh, and also, a big shout out to High Point Scientific, who I've donated a ton of my money to. But, what did they do? They finally did it. They sent me a brand new ASI. Oh, come on, focus. There you go. They sent me a brand new ASI 1600 because they just got tired of trying to fix mine. They really just, like the Chinese people over there were like, Oh, no fix. You go. Go now. I no fix no more. I send no one, leave me alone. Sorry, all you Asian followers out there. That's really bad of me, I shouldn't have done that. 
But I know they were really pissed. They were just like, whatever. So basically High Point Scientific came back and said, hey, would you just like a new one? And they gave me that same song and dance about the uh, Chinese New Year. Jeez, man, they must be having a New Year like every other week over there. I don't know. Anyway, I said, send me a new one. And they did. Yay. So I'm back in 1600 land, which is a better complement and a better camera to a water field scope like this. The ASI 294mm will uh, be dedicated for the bigger uh, RC8 down the road when, you know, when I want to shoot uh, a longer focal length. I'll stick the 294 back on because of its pixel size, much bigger. And what else? Uh, that's it. So hopefully at the end of the video, I've got somewhat of a finished elephant trunk project image, but I do have a pretty killer Seder region. And uh, I was uh, very happy, very pleased with two targets in one summer. All right, uh, so I appreciate your patience. I appreciate uh, all the subscribers. And, and still, even though I haven't been putting out videos, I still get amazing comments from you guys, like best tutorial and awesome video and you've helped me so much man that is just like and there's been some times that I've had some uh, some rough days and I get a message like that super awesome okay so as always until next video clear skies and clear minds